The Scarecrow of Oz by L. Frank Baum Chapter 4 Daylight at Last Cap'n Bill rubbed his eyes, lit a match, and consulted his watch. Nine o'clock. Yes, I guess it's another day, sure enough. Shall we go on? he asked. Of course, said the Orc. Unless this tunnel is different from everything else in the world and has no end, we'll find a way out of it sooner or later. The sailor gently wakened Trot. She felt much rested by her long sleep and sprang to her feet eagerly. Let's start, Captain, was all she said. They resumed the journey and had only taken a few steps when the Orc cried, Wow! and made a great fluttering of its wings and whirling of its tail. The others, who were following a short distance behind, stopped abruptly. "'What's the matter?' asked Cap'n Bill. "'Give us a light,' was the reply. "'I think we've come to the end of the tunnel.' Then, while Cap'n Bill lighted a candle, the creature added, "'If that is true, we needn't have wakened so soon, so we were almost at the end of this place when we went to sleep.' The sailor man and Trot came forward with a light. A wall of rock really faced the tunnel, but now they saw that the opening made a sharp turn to the left, so they followed on by a narrower passage, and then made another sharp turn, this time to the right. "'Blow out the candle, Captain,' said the Orc, in a pleased voice. "'We've struck daylight!' Daylight at last. A shaft of mellow light fell almost at their feet as Trot and the sailor turned the corner of the passage but it came from above, and raising their eyes, they found they were at the bottom of a deep, rocky well, with the top far, far above their heads. And here the passage ended. For a while they gazed in silence, at least two of them being filled with dismay at the sight. But the orc merely whistled softly, and said cheerfully, "'That was the toughest journey I ever had the misfortune to undertake!' and I'm glad it's over. Yet unless I can manage to fly to the top of this pit, we are entombed here forever. Do you think there's room enough for you to fly in? asked the little girl anxiously, and Captain Bill added, It's a straight-up shaft, so I don't see how you'll ever manage it. Were I an ordinary bird, one of those horrid feathered things, I wouldn't even make the attempt to fly out, said the orc. But my mechanical propeller tail can accomplish wonders, and whenever you're ready, I'll show you a trick that is worth while. Oh! exclaimed Trot. Do you intend to take us up too? Why not? I thought, said Cap'n Bill, as you'd go first, and then send somebody to help us by letting down a rope. Ropes are dangerous, replied the Orc, and I might not be able to find one to reach all this distance. Besides, it stands to reason that if I can get out myself, I can also carry you two with me. Well, I'm not afraid, said Trot, who longed to be on the Earth's surface again. Suppose we fall, suggested Cap'n Bill doubtfully. Why, in that case, we would all fall together, returned the Orc. Get aboard, little girl, sit across my shoulders, and put both your arms around my neck. Trot obeyed and when she was seated on the orc, Captain Bill inquired, How about me, Mr. Orc? Why, I think you'd best grab hold of my rear legs and let me carry you up in that manner, was the reply. Captain Bill looked way up at the top of the well, and then he looked at the orc's slender, skinny legs, and heaved a deep sigh. It's going to be some dangle, I guess. But if you don't waste too much time on the way up, I may be able to hang on, said he. All ready, then, cried the orc, and at once his whirling tail began to revolve. Trot felt herself rising into the air. When the creature's legs left the ground, Captain Bill grasped two of them firmly and held on for dear life. The orc's body was tipped straight upward, and Trot had to embrace the neck very tightly to keep from sliding off. Even in this position, the orc had trouble in escaping the rough sides of the well. Several times it exclaimed, Wow! as it bumped its back, or a wing hit against some jagged projection. 
but the tail kept whirling with remarkable swiftness, and the daylight grew brighter and brighter. It was, indeed, a long journey from the bottom to the top, yet almost before Trot realised they had come so far, they popped out of the hole into the clear air and sunshine, and a moment later the orc alighted gently upon the ground. The release was so sudden that even with the creature's care for its passengers, Cap'n Bill struck the earth with a shock that sent him rolling heel over head. But by the time Trot had slid down from her seat, the old sailor man was sitting up and looking around him with much satisfaction. It's sort of pretty here, said he. Earth is a beautiful place, cried Trot. I wonder where on earth we are, pondered the orc, turning first one bright eye and then the other to this side and that. Trees there were, in plenty, and shrubs and flowers and green turf. But there were no houses, there were no paths, there was no sign of civilization whatever. Just before I settled down on the ground I thought I caught a view of the ocean, said the orc. Let's see if I was right. Then he flew to a little hill nearby, and Trot and Cap'n Bill followed him more slowly. When they stood on the top of the hill, they could see the blue waves of the ocean in front of them, to the right of them, and at the left of them. Behind the hill was a forest that shut out the view. I hope it ain't an island, Trot, said Cap'n Bill gravely. If it is, I suppose we're prisoners, she replied. Exactly so, Trot. But even so, it's better than those terrible underground tunnels and caverns, declared the girl. You are right, little one, agreed the orc. Anything above ground is better than the best that lies underground, so let's not quarrel with our fate, but be thankful we've escaped. We are indeed, she replied. But I wonder if we can find something to eat in this place. Let's explore and find out, proposed Cap'n Bill. Those trees over at the left look like cherry trees. On the way to them, the explorers had to walk through a tangle of vines, and Cap'n Bill, who went first, stumbled and pitched forward on his face. Why, it's a melon, cried Trot delightedly, as she saw what had caused the sailor to fall. Cap'n Bill rose to his foot, for he was not at all hurt, and examined the melon. Then he took his big jackknife from his pocket and cut the melon open. It was quite ripe and looked delicious but the old man tasted it before he permitted Trot to eat any. Deciding it was good, he gave her a big slice, and then offered the orc some. The creature looked at the fruit somewhat disdainfully at first, but once he had tasted its flavour, he ate of it as heartily as did the others. Among the vines, they discovered many other melons, and Trot said gratefully, Well, there's no danger of our starving, even if this is an island. Melons? remarked Cap'n Bill, are both food and water. We couldn't have struck anything better. Farther on they came to the cherry trees, where they obtained some of the fruit, and at the edge of the little forest were wild plums. The forest itself consisted entirely of nut trees, walnuts, filberts, almonds, and chestnuts, so there would be plenty of wholesome food for them while they remained there. Cap'n Bill and Trot decided to walk through the forest to discover what was on the other side of it, but the orc's feet were still so sore and lumpy from walking on the rocks that the creature said he preferred to fly over the treetops and meet them on the other side. The forest was not large, so by walking briskly for fifteen minutes they reached its farthest edge and saw before them the shore of the ocean. It's an island all right, said Trot with a sigh. Yes, and a pretty island, too, said Cap'n Bill, trying to conceal his disappointment on Trot's account. I guess, partner, if the worst comes to the worst, I could build a raft, or even a boat, from those trees, so as we could sail away in it. The little girl brightened at this suggestion. I don't see the orc anywhere, she remarked, looking around. Then her eyes lighted upon something, and she exclaimed, Oh, Cap'n Bill, isn't that a house over there to the left? Cap'n Bill, looking closely, 
saw a shed-like structure, built at one edge of the forest. Seems like it, Trot. Not that I'd call it much of a house, but it's a building, all right. Let's go over and see if it's occupied. End of chapter 4